Whoa, I mean, literally, I got soaked. That's amazing. <laughs> Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and welcome along to my creative live class, One Flash Splash Photography. I'm going to show you how you can take amazing splash photos at home using, well, just one flash. Every picture you take will be unique. You cannot take the same picture twice. We'll be throwing water, we'll be dropping water. The whole thing is connected by splashes and just one flash. Yes, there will be a little bit of water splashing around. Yes, things may get a little bit messy, but you'll have a load of fun in the process. Hi, and welcome back to Creative Live, your place to come for all things creative education. We are so excited to be launching another new class today uh, with Gavin Huey, and it is a one flash splash photography class. Uh, Gavin, welcome to the stream. So excited to have you here. Hi, okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. I know. How exciting is this? Um, yeah, this has been a while in the making. Yeah, this is a big day. This is really exciting. Yeah, it is really exciting. We've been working on this class for a few months with Gavin, um, and it's a really fun class, especially as we are approaching summer a lot of places. Uh, it's a fun, a fun class to have play with water and create really unique um, photos. So Gavin, tell us as everybody's tuning in, um, tell us where you guys are tuning in from and Gavin, tell us where you're, you're uh, joining us. Okay, so I'm a little way from you. The, the wonders mm -hmm. of technology is bringing us together. So uh, I'm in the UK. If there's anybody, is there anybody in the UK? If you're in the UK, say, say hello. That'd be, yeah. that'd be amazing. So <laughs> I'm for, for anybody not in the UK, I'm just outside London, but for those in, in the UK, I'm in Sussex um, and we're having an awesome, lovely day today. So lovely bit of uh, early summer sunshine, which is really, really nice. But of course, my class is all indoors, which is sort of ironic because today's the sort of day you really want to be outside in the sun here. But uh, yeah. Uh, this is this is great. I don't know. I can't see the comments. Do we have anybody here, Kate? Is there anyone with no us? Or is no it just... one checking in from the UK yet, but we oh. have Maryland, we have uh, Canada, we have Florida tuning in, everybody who is on the edge of summertime. So this will be a fun class for them to, to play with water. So welcome everybody to the stream. Now, Gavin, tell us a little bit about why you wanted to create this class. Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? So, uh, well, we've been locked down like, well, pretty much everywhere else, I guess. <laughs> so um, one of the things I normally do, I, I'm normally a portrait photographer. That's kind of my my comfort zone. But I have a little sideline, another little thing I've liked to do over the years. And it's been involving uh, one of my passions, which is flash. I love using flashes. I love using lighting. And I like taking pictures that are unrepeatable in many ways. So over the years, when I'm not taking pictures of people, I've often done pictures of splashes, water, water drips, water um, crashes, and all sorts of permutations around that. And I've done it because it's something you can do at home. You can do on your own if you don't have an assistant. You can do with the kit that you use if, like me, you actually use flash to do other things like take people pictures. So it doesn't mean going out and getting a hold of load of new things. It's a matter of using the skills, using your time and using it in a different sort of creative way. And the pictures are just amazing. So they, they take advantage of flash in as much as these could be the sharpest pictures you ever take. They take advantage of flash in as much as they freeze time. So you get these absolutely unique shots. And it's just good fun to do. I mean, it really is fantastic fun. 
it's, it's like being a kid again. You get the perfect opportunity to throw water around, to make a mess, and no one's going to tell you off. Exactly. My wife, maybe occasionally, but normally <laughs> we're okay. <laughs> well, I, I already watched the class, and it's so much fun to watch you having fun, too. It's, it's, a, it's a class that inspires you to go do something, actually uh, go make a mess, go play, but also you're having so much fun doing the class that it's just, it's very fun to watch as well. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you watched it because um, it ended up a little bit longer than I originally <laughs> intended. So my original idea, I put this together and uh, it was, I thought probably about an hour and a half class. I was thinking kind of in that zone. I think it was about two and a half hours in the end. Um, yeah, and I think maybe I put a few more bits in than I originally intended, but you've got to do that. You've got to get all of the information in. You can't half do something. So uh, yeah, I took a nice little journey through the process of taking the pictures. And then I also made sure that I covered any post-processing as well, because for me, that's really important. One of the things that really annoys me is if you watch a, a class or a, a photographer or, or whatever it is, and they show these amazing pictures and you think there's definitely a jump between pressing the shutter and what I'm seeing on screen. Yeah. And I, I really wanted to make sure that jump didn't happen, that I, I showed you the relevant bits at that time that were using the photos that I actually shot on the day as well. So yeah, that, that seemed like quite important. And that kind of made the class a bit longer. Yeah. And it, it ended up being so informative because you do, you take us right down to every moment throughout from dropping the ice cube to, uh, you know, what it, what it turns out to be. So it's, it's a really fun class. Um, and we're going to look at a few photos here in a minute, but I want to do a few more shout outs. Nobody checking in from the UK yet. So if you're from the UK, make sure you say hi to Gavin. That's where he's from. We have lots of people from India, Amarillo, Texas, Nigeria, British Columbia, oh. Bangkok. We have a whole worldwide audience. So it's really exciting to have everyone here joining us. And as a reminder, this is our live kickoff with Gavin Huey, who is our newest instructor and is the teacher of uh, One Flash Splash Photography. It is a, it's yeah. a tongue twister. It is. I thought, I mean, it, it says what it does on the tin. Um, and yet somehow I made it really complicated to say. It, I tell you, it reads better than it, and, than it, it says. Does. <laughs> it does. It looks really nice and, and compact when you look at it, but then yeah. you just get a little tongue twisted. When Would you're it actually... have helped if I used more? Okay, I should have used two flashes. That was the mistake. Yeah, there yeah. we go. There we two go. Two flash, splash. <laughs> actually, maybe that's the sequel. There we go. We'll see. Yeah. Two splash. All right. I think we got to look at some of these photos and see what we are going to take away from this class. All right, let me move my screen. Right. Ah, okay, cool. Do you want me to explain? Or, yes, um, you, tell, I mean, you've seen the class, Kate. You, you could do this. This is, <laughs> this is in your wheelhouse. You. Okay, so yeah, we took a, a lot of different photos in, and they're coming up in a bit of a random order. So this is somewhere in the middle of the, the class where I've gone through how to get a, a white background. And this is about as simple a shot as, as I could imagine if I'm explaining it to somebody. So I'm going to explain it to you, but bear with me. It's, it's better when you actually see it than when I explain it, because what I've done there is I've got a bottle and I've clamped it to a boom arm and I poured water out of the bottle and photographed the water coming out the bottle. It doesn't sound very exciting, Kate. I realize now you, you've got to watch the video really to, to kind of get the gist of this because uh, well, we're going to watch a little video after. Two. In a minute. Oh, that's good. Um, so that really is kind of, um, yeah, that, that is the result of pouring water out of a bottle. The reason that's interesting is because of fluid dynamics, things happening, chaos theory. All of these things are, are adding to the image to create a unique picture. So when you actually pour water out of a bottle, boring as that sounds, photographically, every moment is different. Every moment is unique. And as the bottle empties, so the water pressure changes, so things change, and you end up with different drips and things. And although we had two there, uh, what I actually ended up creating was something called a triptych. So three images, connecting theme, joined together. 
And as part of the class, I've given away a whole bunch of things to, to get you going, like the images I took, but also a Photoshop action to make it a, a, a triptych just like that. So that's in, included in part of the, uh, the course materials, yeah, I think we called it. Yes, exactly. And, you know, something that you talk about throughout the class and, and that really resonated with me about these kind of splash water shots is how much you're capturing this moment that is never going to be recreated because water, you know, just just like you were saying, all of the uh, the mo everything about the movement of water, you're you're never going to be able to recreate that same splash ever again. So it's such no. a unique experience being able to capture something that will never happen again. And it is weird, isn't it, when you say it like that, because photography, uh, any sort of photography, we're trying to create things that are, are different to other people's. Uh, landscape photographers will know that if they go out and take a landscape the next day, the, the lighting will be completely different. But the landscape yeah. is still the same. And so it is with the splashes. The bottle I use might be the same, but the water coming out of it will look very different. And if you take enough photos, you'll end up with a very wide range of shots, which is kind of why I like the triptych idea, because what do you do with lots and lots of photos <laughs> as a photographer? Um, I mean, you can put each one on Instagram, I guess, and do a swipe across. That would have been good. Uh, yeah. But if you're going to make a print, yeah, make a triptych. Why not? Well, I think we have a couple more photos coming up that, are, that show the progression for us. So let's take a look at a couple other ones. This one's really cool. Uh, yes. OK, so uh, that one. Yeah, that was uh, fun. So um, I think that was about that was getting towards the end. And I got to the point where ha, if we make a mess, does it matter so much now? We're kind of at the end. So I'm literally throwing water around in the, the space that we hired to do the shoot. Um, yeah. Now, I, I, to be clear, that is water. It isn't actual red wine because that would be a travesty. I mean, <laughs> Could you imagine that would be um, there should be a law against that so uh, if you're going to do you this can't waste wine like that that thank, thank you i know i mean i'm not a red wine drinker but even so yeah it just doesn't seem right so yeah <laughs> it's not sort of uh, it's not um a drink it's not sticky it's just water with food coloring in to give the the color and yeah i'm trying to create shapes i've got a feeling that's when i was trying to make an s shape because the one on the right is definitely a winner. That, if it is, uh, let's say it was an S shape because now I look good. Because if I say that and that's true, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> so I think that's what it was. And I think we, we've kind of put them together and we ended up making something that looked a bit like Yeah, exactly. It. It's right behind you. Oh, yeah, you can't see it. I said, I'm pointing it. Of course, it's <laughs> our tech guy in the background is the best. Well done. <laughs> and, you know, I, we saw a little bit of a, a snippet of it um in your trailer but you use that um much like you're using the heart to kind of create letters and create this graphical um this graphic yeah. image and it was really really cool it's not something you would have thought about um with splash photography until i saw you do it and it was such an interesting unique way to use photography in a graphical way like that yeah that's an odd one to explain so the the idea was uh, when I was writing out the class, I thought, how can we come up with something at the end just to make this sort of interesting, bring it all together to show the the extension? Because the class covers the core, the, the stuff you need to know. But like anything in photography, you need to take those ideas and expand upon them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I did with the last bit, which was, OK, we can create S shapes in the air with water and can we actually turn that into writing? If we broke a letter down into its constituent parts, uh, can I do a curve and a straight line? And can I effectively write letters? And the answer is, yeah, yeah, you can, you can, <laughs> you really can. Uh, top tip is make your word very short. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so I went with, uh, well, no spoiler alert, you'll see it. Um, it it's um, yeah, a simple word made out of, of, of um, water frozen in the air uh, that's connected to the, the, what we were using, to the food colouring and the water. Uh, yeah, that was great. That was one of those ideas. I wrote it down on paper and I thought, that's going to work well. And I had a few goes and thought, that's going to take some time. Yeah. But it was worth doing. <laughs> well worth doing. All right, let's look at another photo. 
this was another, you know, I think you were making the letters, right? That's right. Okay, so yeah. there we go. So this is so this is the constituent parts. I'm going to say of a letter E. Okay. So if you're if you're watching yep. this, can you imagine how this might become uh, a letter E? So you've got some uprights and you've got some sort of you know you can turn them around 90 degrees and you could you could put that together to make um, probably an E or a, a C maybe. There's there's a few little little bits you can do in there. So those are the individual photos with a little bit of post processing and I can tell that because the end of the glasses are missing where my finger should be. So uh, in the class, I show you how to add the stem of the glass back in again, how to photograph it, how to construct the whole thing. Um, yeah, so everything's there. I don't hide anything in the class. I make sure absolutely everything is in there for you to have a go yourself because, well, that would be a bit unfair otherwise. So yeah, that's <laughs> those are parts of a letter. Well, we have lots more people checking in saying, Hi, Gavin. Still waiting for someone from the UK to say hi, but now we have South Africa, Morristown, Tennessee, the Philippines, Connecticut. So everyone, thank you again for joining us. And I'll remind you, we are watching uh, the live kickoff for Gavin's brand new class that comes out today, One Flash Slash Photography. If you, click, <laughs> if you click on the link that I've dropped in the comments after this live stream, it'll take you right over to the class and it starts right at 9.30 and you can learn about everything we are talking about here right now. Um, let's take another look at another, at another uh, photo, excuse me. This one's so cool. Oh, yeah. So this is, um, yeah, going in a, a good order here. This is, we're going back to basics, literally back to basics. So the class starts with the essential, the gear guide, the things you need. Um, I wanted to get into taking photos as quickly as I could. So uh, we cover those bits. But um, if like me, I mean, just jump to the class three and, you, and you're going to be here. So, um, yeah, so this is simple splash photography. And the simplest way of doing splash photography is by using a black background, effectively. I mean, I get into the whole, how do I do my white backgrounds? What material do I use? But for black backgrounds, basically anything black, anything white cleanable, or, or you know, it doesn't matter if it gets too wet, is, is gonna be absolutely fine. And we go through how to move the light, where to position the light, all of those things. But at the end of the day, uh, the fun bit is dropping something in. So what you're seeing is effectively the kit I used throughout this, which is an ice cube, which is actually made of glass, not ice. It's a, a decorative ice cube, a series of plastic glasses, which are plastic and not glass for fairly obvious safety reasons, and lots and lots of water and food coloring. So yeah, this is a, a sequence. So I thought it'd be fun to put a sequence of images together because in the splash world, we're always trying to nail that splash, that epic moment, the amazing splash. But there's other bits involved as well. So these are three images showing the progression, as it were. And in fact, in the, the final class, I stitched these together as one single image to create a, uh, a, a sort of a, a time lapse effect, if you like, in one photo of an ice cube falling, splashing, hitting the bottom. And uh, yeah, we join it all together, but I've done it by taking multiple pictures. So the class starts with the simple stuff, how to nail that, how to do it. And there's no high speed shooting involved. You don't need a, a complicated camera to make it happen. It's all done with one flash and one click of the camera or remote cable. So it's not, um, th there's no kind of power of camera required. You could do, I could have done this with my very first um, Pentax camera, I think. I probably could have nailed it with that. That's pretty cool. That's, I think, the most interesting thing about this class also is that, you know, you speak to, it's not about the gear you have. Um, it's about you're bringing your own creativity and, and trying things out. You can capture these style of photos with whatever camera you have, right? Yeah, absolutely. The camera is actually um, not the most important part of the process, believe it or not. It's it's the props, probably are the most important part, followed immediately by the, the flash. This is your next most important thing. OK, so the flash you use is going to make 
a difference. And in the in the class, I go through speed lights versus kind of studio lights, and there are advantages to to these sorts of flashes. Um, but yeah, it's the flash that's doing the heavy lifting. The camera is recording the moment in time, but it's actually the flash that's creating that moment. It's freezing the action. It's lighting the scene. And I go through the whole thing in, in the class as well about flash duration and why it matters. And it, it's all covered in there. But you could do this with a speed light and a basic camera. You really could. Very cool. So there's nothing stopping from anyone starting doing this today, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you could start today. Uh, you've probably got a lot of the kit. I mean, some of the shots are literally a bottle and some water. Yeah. And that's it. Well, I think we actually have a shot that's coming up right now. Um, that is, it's just you lining up some bottles. There we go. Oh, uh, no, actually, these were cups. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that so that one is um, that yeah on uh, white backgrounds. In, again, in my notes, I wrote this really easy note, which was um, let's do it with red, green, and blue colored water, and then the physics of actually how do you drop? Because that's one shot. That's not multiple pictures. That is one moment in time. How do you drop three ice cubes simultaneously into three glasses, nail it, and uh, get the photo? And the answer is you ask your wife to help you. So my wife, Sam, <laughs> is holding two ice cubes. I'm holding a third and the remote release. And um, let's just say there was probably a couple of outtakes that didn't make it in, but <laughs> but we nailed it. We got it. You did, you know, and I think that's part of the fun of this class is there's going to be lots of outtakes, but you're also going to create photos that you never could have imagined without having some of those outtakes come along the way. Yeah, that's the thing. important thing in photography. It doesn't matter what photography you do. If you only learn one thing about photography, it's don't show your bad pictures. Just <laughs> there we go. However, take a lot of bad pictures, because if you don't take the bad ones, you'll never get to the good stuff. That's... Exactly. That's that's the nature of anything, any creative pursuit, really. Indeed. All right. So now we're going to get a little into the class and see some actual action of you. Uh, uh, you know, dropping some ice cubes into water. Let's see how much fun Let's you're do having doing it. Okay. So yes. Okay. Tell us a little bit. In in this clip right now, you're actually uh, giving us a little bit of a a hack on how to drop an ice cube in without um, without know, missing missing. Yeah. Which is <laughs> yeah. Something. So this is a really good hack that you're showing us here. Yeah. Learn the hard way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we've got a, a floor tile, a ceramic floor tile. So if you miss, uh, you really know because it rings like a bell. It really does. It's quite scary. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm dipping the ice cube or whatever it is I'm going to drop into the water. So it's got some water on it. And then if you hold it above, the water will drip into the glass. And that should at least mean that you stand a better chance of hitting the glass when you let go of the ice cube. It mostly works. So uh, that's kind of the idea. And then trying to nail the perfect moment. And I think in this one, we're actually talking about uh, flash duration, because I can see my, my settings are on the side, flash yeah. at 1 16th power. So I suspect this is a clip from the one where we're talking about the importance of uh, the duration of the flash. Yeah. Uh, so the, the whole idea with these is freezing of, of movement. And that comes around because flash lasts for a short period of time. And you get that by reducing the power of your flash. So if you overdo your flash, if you make your flash too bright, modern flashes will just stay on for longer. That kind of makes sense. The more light you need, the longer the flash stays on. The mm -hmm. less light you need, the shorter the flash stays on. And if you set your camera up correctly, you see no flash, no picture. So the flash is effectively powering the, the picture and being the shutter speed. It's a bit of a mind shift, but when you get your head around it, it's really awesome. And I think in this one, I actually put the flash to full power and then uh, try and show the sort of smudging that you get. Yeah. And even for me, because I haven't done it for a long time until I did this, because it's something you know. I, I know I don't do it wrong on purpose. So doing it wrong on purpose for Creative Live was great because it reminded me that of, whoa, yeah, no, that really isn't. And there we go, one quarter power, and it's starting to smudge out a little bit. You can, I, I'm trying to point with my cursor. I don't know why. Uh, but on the <laughs> right-hand side, there's, oh, there we are, look there. 
There we go. Thank you very much. This guy's good. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Look at that. Yeah, so you can see the water is smudged because it's moved during the duration of the flash. So that and was the plan. Yeah, that's that is one of the most, you know, it, basically the takeaway from the class is that the flash is everything. Um, mm. You know, you kind of set your, you're able to set your camera settings from the beginning and that's, you don't really mess with those going forward. It's just the flash that you're really kind of playing with throughout the class, which is not what I expected when I was watching. Yeah, I think I used two lenses and pretty much one setting throughout the entire session. I don't think I changed the camera setting yeah. much at all. Uh, basically, okay, I'm, I'm a lazy photographer. If I can get <laughs> away with doing as little as possible with the camera, I will, because I was having too much fun making a mess with the water. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's the point of the class. It's more fun to make a mess than it is to fiddle with settings, right? Yeah, you, you can clear it up. I mean, that, that's what these are for. These, these are- Exactly. You, know, you need those. You need these, you need all, all these things you need, but you do that at the end. Have fun before then. Yeah. So tell us a little bit before, you know, we're already getting to the end of our yeah. live stream. Um, and just as a reminder, you, everyone, you can click the link I have dropped into the comments. Uh, you will see it at the top as well. Um, right after this live stream is over, you can head over to watch the class. It is streaming for free for 24 hours only. Make sure you head over to watch it today. Um, and Gavin, tell us a little bit about like when else you use this type of photography. Are you always using it in studio like this or do you have opportunities to use it out in the world when your kid's jumping in the pool or something like, you know, a bit thinking of your portrait photography, is yeah. that something that you would consider? Absolutely. We've done many portrait shoots where the key point is to freeze something happening, whether it's a, yeah. a dancer or whether it's somebody using some some powder or just doing something active. Um, the, the skills you learn here are transportable over to other areas of photography because the skills I learned to do this, I learned not from splashes, but probably by watching creative live videos in the past. We actually did a, a creative uh, photography challenge years ago where we were playing with water. We had a, another instructor, Chris Warwick, dump a whole bucket of water on his head while we tried to capture it. And it was, that was pretty fun. Fun Again, playing with water is, yep. is a pretty fun thing to yep. do. We've done it with, <laughs> with models. Uh, if your model is brave enough, you can take exactly the same techniques, replace the bottle with a model, just make them aware of the risks of getting wet. <laughs> and that the, the, then you have water placement and facial facial uh you know expressions is what the word i, I was looking for do. <laughs> you certainly do all right gavin well thank you so much for joining us for this little live stream uh and we will we have actually before i let you go we have a couple questions coming in yeah, um sure. we've got time go for it just tell us uh tell us about tell us your lighting setup again real quick it's again this is a single flash uh class so he has one flash it's not a whole setup just a single flash tell us which one you're using so uh, the flash I use throughout is the Adorama Flashpoint Explore 400, this, this fella here. And it is always or almost always behind the subject. So all the photos you see are backlit photos. So lighting behind, um, there is a, a little bit of a white transparent background, which we use tracing paper. You'll see that in the video. You'll be able to watch it in a minute. I go through all the technical bits of that. And I go through all about the distance as well, because the distance between your light and your background will radically change the picture. And you'll see all of that, because it's all included in the class. Everything's in there. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Gavin. It was wonderful to have you on and, and get to hear a little bit more about the class. And everyone, I will be dropping another link to the class in the comments here and make sure you head over to watch the One Flash Slash Photography class live today for 24 hours with our brand new instructor, Gavin. Thank you again, Gavin. So good to see you. Brilliant. Thanks for having me on, Kate, and hope everybody enjoys the video. Take care. Have a great day. Pursuing creativity is arguably the most practical 
thing that you can do. We humans are adaptation champions. That's what makes us human, our ability to imagine. The hard part is to look inside and say, what are my invisible beliefs that I have about money? I wanted to figure out how it actually worked. And you are really here because you became passionate about an idea. What does it take to capture great photographs of birds? You have to be grounded in your cameras. You need to understand the technology. Just like any band shoot, we're looking to capture great shots of the band themselves playing on stage. So the drummer shot, lead singer, guitars. How do you even prepare to shoot with your phone? And then we're actually gonna go into the edit. Once you hit rock bottom, there's no place to go but up. You learn what, what's real. You learn what's needed. In astrophotography, there is a great deal more planning involved because you are literally shooting in the dark. We can't change others, but we can change our perspective. Wow, that's a good way to start the day. I had tears in my eyes. If you're feeling isolated and looking for creative connection, try tuning into creativelive.com slash TV. That's where we've got a 24 seven live stream from the kitchen counters. I can do that back lit shot that I really like to do. From the studios and living rooms of many of the world's top creators where we're doing musical performances, Q and A's, cooking shows, virtual book tour events, drawing, spoken word poetry, and more. Pass me by waiting for an invitation when the world is greater than my nation or my occupation. Be someone you've never been. You feel all that adrenaline, it's medicine. It actually helps me feel like my days are more purposeful. I hope that out of this deep pain will come some collective growth. Dive into Creative Live TV today.